In this video, I will talk about a popular topic uh, in management, in business, in business magazines, and even in the internet. This is about this is about the eighty and twenty percent rule. Human productivity. Human productivity follows a pattern. Not everybody in a group or organization contributes equally to an output. Of all the effort that you do, 20% of that will contribute to 80% of the results. Power and significant influence in politics and in business rest only on 20% of the population and sometimes on fewer than 20%. So when we talk about productivity, we do not mean the productivity of good things always. People can be productive of the bad things. So the 80 slash 20% rule, it's called the rule of the vital few. It's also called in general as the Pareto principle or the Pareto uh, distribution principle. And it boils down to this, 80% of the results come from 20% of the causes. And just like what I told you, the results that we talk about here need not be good results always. So for example, the noise, the noise of a class. I had been a teacher for much of my life and the nuisance which truly upset me is the noise. But much of the noise in a classroom actually come from very few people. They were the ones who start the noise. That would be the 20% of the student in a class. Okay, so let us go to a typical thing that happens in your class. Class projects. So what does happen in a class project? Well, your teachers will group you into groups. Five members in each group. But the fact of the matter is, only the group leader will produce 80% of the group report. Uh, does it sound familiar? Yes, it sounds familiar because you are a part of this group. You contribute very little to the output of the group, and much of that is actually done by your group leader. That is also true when it comes to team sports. In team sports competition, 20% of the members produce 80% of the team's points. Not everybody is contributing uh, equally to the, to, the, to the points. It's also the same with making the rebound, making the blocks, and making the assists. 20% of the members give 80% of all the assists, the blocks. In Michael Jordan's career, he made a total of 5,987 points. He played 179 games. So on average, he did 33 points per game. James, on the other hand, made 29 points per game. So that is a lot for one person. I do not always watch NBA, but what I see there is the points on average, the winning points on average is around 100. Pay attention to this. 33 points of that 100 was due to one person. So we see the Pareto principle, the 80-20% rule, operating even in team sports. How about in crimes? You know, one of the common crimes reported in your barangay hall is the theft of bikes. But the truth of the matter is, 80% of the bike thefts are done by 20% of the thieves in your town. The people who are stealing bikes are the same persons. The same persons are stealing the, the bicycles in your town. And it's kind of understandable because, because if, you, if you are successful in stealing one bike, you become emboldened to do it again because of the success and because you become more confident and more competent to steal. And so, something like this would happen. 80% of the reports on bike thefts is actually done or is actually due to 20% of the thieves. How can you make the 80-20% rule, how can you make this pattern in human productivity work in your favor or work in the group's favor? So, let us go back to 
the group projects. You know what? If you have 35 students in a class, and if you were to group them into five, each of them will be, will, would have five members. So, assuming that the 80-20% rule, only one in each five would be behind 80% of the output. It's like so much of the work is done by one out of five. So, all in all, there would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven students who were industrious enough to produce 80% of their group's project. And the other four would contribute very little. And some of them are practically, and some of them are practically useless as members of the group. But they get the credit because the output is listed as the group's output. So, how can you make this 80-20% rule work in your favor, given that this is how productivity takes place in a group. Well, this is what we can do. Instead of grouping them into five, let us group them into three. Okay? So instead of having five, one, two, three, or seven groups in a class, we will have something like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, or twelve groups in a class. Each group contain only three members. And so let us just say the group leader would be the one who is behind 80% of the group's output. Well, in this case, at least, we would be, we, we shall have more students who are working hard to produce the group's output. Coming from seven, we now have one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12 student leaders who are working hard to produce 80% of the group output. And so you only have two persons who are relatively idle in the group compared with four. So this is one way to make the 80-20% rule work in the group's favor. How about when we are talking about basketball teams? How can you make the 80-20% rule work in a team sports? So let's say, for example, we have our first five. And judging from, judging from the past uh, competitions, we can tell who among them is the most uh, productive in making points. We can tell the average points that they can make in a game. So let's say, for example, June can contribute something like 33 points in a game. And Gibbs can only contribute something like two points per game. So how can you make 80 to 20% rule work in the team's favor? Well, one of the strategy that I saw coaches, uh, coaches use is coaches do not, do not instruct or do not coach the other players to be better in shooting because that is not going to happen. In a team, there is someone who is always most prolific in shooting the ball and making the points. And so I had seen this in coaching. And so now what coaches do is they will instruct the other members of the team to help the most prolific shooter get an opportunity to shoot the ball. So what this other force would do is they will create a space where June can come in and June can make the score. So these members will not strive to be better shooters because they will contribute only very little into the productivity in making points. What they would do instead is they will give more opportunities for the most prolific shooter so that the most prolific shooter can do what he is best in doing. So let's say, for example, we are in the opposing side and we know someone who is very productive in making points. So what do we do? Well... We prevent him from getting the ball. We don't give him the space where he can enter and shoot the ball. And we do our best to prevent him from getting the opportunity to take an open shot. That is what we can do and that is how we can make the 80 to 20% rule work in our favor.